So reaction rates are measured by the change of concentration over time. And if we can make the time uh, increment infinitesimally small, we get our instantaneous rate, which is also the tangent to the concentration versus time slope. And we'll look at a couple graphs in a moment. More often than not, we're using a uh, measurable segment of time, and we get an average rate. And uh, that time interval can vary a bit, which then can affect our average rates. So we're going to be looking at um, method of initial rates. And um, if we have a zero order reaction, the rate equals a constant. If we double the concentration that we use, well, concentration raised up to the zero power is still one, so we don't change the rate at all. So the ratio of the rates will remain one when we double the concentration. If we have a first order reaction, rate equals constant times concentration. If we double the concentration, that raised to the first power gives a factor of two. So the ratio of rates doubles as we double the concentration. For a second order reaction, rate equals a constant times the concentration squared. If we double the concentration, that two squared gives us four. So if we double the concentration, the ratio of the rates is now a factor of four higher. So this is the method of initial rates. And if the data is simple and clear, we can just do something like this. We double the concentration and see if the rate stays the same, it doubles or quadruples. And that will give us whether we have a zero order, a first order, or a second order reaction. Um, sometimes the data is not quite so clear. So we have a more mathematical method to look at it. So what if we have some concentration that isn't a double, it might be a third or two thirds or something like that. So we can also get it by doing a ratio of the two rates. So I have it as a rate one over rate two. Um, and um, I apologize that because that's going to be different from my, the next board here. Uh, but the numbers aren't important, uh, is that we have the ratio of the true rates uh, in shorthand notation R1 over R2. Uh, so it would be um, constant times the concentration raised up to the order. Well, the constant is identical, so it just cancels out of the equation. So we have our um, concentration to a power over our concentration to a power. Well, we can pull that power out and get um, the ratio of the concentrations raised up to the power equals the ratio of the rates. And uh, we know that if we want to isolate this power, we use logarithms. So we take the natural logarithm of both sides of the reaction. So we have the logarithm of the ratio of the rates equal logarithm of the ratio of concentration raised to the power. The rules for logarithm means that power comes out in front. Now we can divide both sides by this log of the ratio of the concentrations, and we have a tool for getting our order of the reaction even when the uh, ratio of the concentrations or rates are not easy to visually see. So uh, the order will be log of the ratio of the rates over log of the ratio of the concentrations. Let's look at uh, these three orders a little bit. So I have zero order on the left. So zero order on the left, we're just going to have a straight line. The rate is a a constant, it doesn't depend on concentration. So if we double the concentration, the rate still has the same slope all the way down, uh, which means that our instantaneous uh, rate, which is the slope, 
is going to equal the average rate. So it's going to be the same slope here in the beginning as it is at the end and all the way through. So our rate is the same throughout the whole process here. Uh, for a first order reaction, we, um, we're going to have a faster rate, so a steeper slope for a higher concentration, smaller slope with lower concentration. Uh, and then, but the slopes get less as time goes along. So our average rate does not equal our instantaneous rate. So the instantaneous rate on the right side is noticeably smaller than the instantaneous rate at the beginning. And the average would be a, a line between two points along here, which won't equal either instantaneous, so it be an average between them, of course. So our uh, instantaneous rate does not equal our average rate, it keeps changing. And second order time is even more dramatic, so I have two versions of this. Um, so a shorter time frame here. So the higher concentration starts off with a steeper rate, steeper slope, but it changes more dramatic. So they start to approach each other a little bit more. Um, and then going over longer time period, they almost look like they end up matching each other. But obviously our instantaneous rate and our average rate will not match. So average, be a slope like that and at the beginning is very steep and the end is very shallow. So our instantaneous and average rates will change but um, if we do our ratio of rates for the zero order reaction they have the same slope so it always comes out to be one and then when we use the equation to get the order of the reaction um, well, log of a one is always a zero. So it doesn't matter what our ratio of the concentrations are, our log of the ratio of the rates always gives zero, order of zero. And it doesn't matter if we're using instantaneous data or average data. For the first order reaction, our ratio of the rates actually equals the ratio of the concentrations. And it works this way whether we're doing instantaneous rates or average rates. They come out to be the ratio of the concentrations. And then when we do our order, calculation for our order, our um, log of the ratio of the rates over log of ratio of concentrations, well, these ratios are the same, so the logs come out to be the same, so we end up with the order of one on this. For a second order reaction, our ratio of the rates does not equal the, the ratio of rates of instantaneous does not equal the ratio of rates uh, for our average. And our average um, uh, will decrease from the initial ratio of the concentration squared. Uh, so the average keeps changing, the ratio of the rates of the average keeps changing. Um, and then when we solve for the order of the reaction, the uh, log of the ratio of the instantaneous rates over the concentrations remains to equal two, but the average starts to decrease. It starts to in, not decrease, it starts to change. It starts to increase from two. So for second order reaction, our best data comes when we have the smallest time interval in the closest to an instantaneous rate. Uh, the bigger our time interval is, the poorer quality of the order of the reaction that we get back out from this calculation. I think I have something hidden underneath these. Oh yeah, it's the, the ratio of the concentration. Uh, it'll increase, so they decrease the same rate, but uh, they start off here as a, a two to one but it's a much larger number here. So our ratio of the concentration increases, but that's not affecting our equation down here since the zero is determined by the ratio of the, con the rates. Uh, in a first order reaction, our ratio of the concentrations remain the same throughout. In a second order reaction, uh, that ratio decreases. So we start off here with uh, quite a bit, 
but the um, higher order one decreases faster when they approach each other. So the ratio decreases. And that is part of what is uh, affecting the order of the calculation with the average here. So uh, especially when we think we have a second order reaction, we want to use the smallest time interval that we can on our average uh, calculations. Thank you. 